Chris Wicks is a self-styled chef patron with a passion for the theatre of dining in the mould of molecular chefs like Heston Blumenthal. Chris took over Bell's Diner eight years ago in the city's trendy Montpellier district and has been steadily building on his reputation for creative cooking ever since. The modern side of cookery gives us lots of textures and we can implant different flavours within our dish. Although some of the ideas may look a bit wacky, when they taste it, they realise all the combinations go together really well. But does this softly spoken innovator have what it takes to win through to the next round? I'm just hoping that the food that I produce just knocks everyone dead. And hopefully I'll go through and win it. Hi there, Chris. Very Hi good to see you. Good to see you too. Palatial. Palatial, you think so? <laughs> so, what have you got on the menu today? Right, so we're going to do a jelly deal but my version of jelly deal. Ah. And after that, we're doing venison with chocolate, a little pumpkin espuma on the plate. Both of Chris's dishes take classic combinations and attempt to give them a modern twist. The eel and beetroot starter is followed by venison and chocolate for the main. Will his cooking style of temperature, texture and taste earn him a place in the next round? So it's a bit tricky because it's all about temperature control. The jelly, we want room temperature beetroot, obviously, room temperature, and the eel, and then we've made the apple sauce slightly warm. The warm flakes of rich, smoky eel sit atop the textural beetroot chunks and the delicate agar beetroot jelly. Next is a garnish of apple sauce, pea shoots, and sorrel. Then it's the melting horseradish ice cream, and finally, pancetta crisps. There we have it. We've got to send it now, because everything is going to melt. So will his fun version of Jelly Deal work for our esteemed critic and his guest, Jane Middleton, from The Good Food Guide? There is a lovely, playful elegance about this, yes, isn't there? Yes, yes, and I do love the presentation. I do love smoked eel. It has that unctuous richness. It's just a touch too sweet for me. Slightly, I agree. Um, the idea seems to be an absolutely wonderful idea, yes. and I think it, it is lovely and entertaining mm. and lovely. The execution, I think, will need a little touch more refinement. It could, be, it could be more, more gutsy. I agree, that would really bring it together. Um, the flavours are just more robust. British? Um, <laughs> jelly and ice cream, that's very British. <laughs> <laughs> but where are the crackers? Where are the funny hats? Where's the bouncy <laughs> castle? <laughs> well, the first course has put a smile on Matthew's face. But can Chris's mane of venison repeat the trick? He's added a measure of rendered fat to the sous vide bag before it's slow cooked in a water bath. So it's got to cook in its own fat because most of the flavour in meat is in the fat. For absolute precision, he tests the temperature. When it hits 48 degrees, the cut will be medium rare. Then it's finished in the hot pan before being well rested. The lush kale is parboiled and then wilted in the pan. With the tension mounting in the kitchen, it's time to plate up. This is very scary because it can explode and you're all going to get covered. What's their prayer? Extremely relieved that it didn't explode. First, the pressurised pumpkin mix is topped off with roasted hazelnuts. Then the kale, the sliced venison and rich chocolate sauce are followed by the red currants to garnish. It's time to take it to the critic. But is Chris happy with his presentation? Should we redo the spuma quickly? Will Chris's last minute adjustments make all the difference to our critical expert? It's like roadkill, but it's been beautifully butchered on the side of the road. And you know, here we have a bit of tarmac.